everyone and welcome to another episode of 27 questions the globe defenders can't answer try we will answer to the best of my abilities for me you have got all Olaf so um, we were stuck at question 6 where I decided that I want a separate video just for question 6 because it it's that the, one of the most ridiculous points how can gas pressure exist without a container? How can gas pressure exist without a container? Even though no one has ever been able to demonstrate this violation of natural law. First of all, could you could you show me where it's a violation of natural law? And, and how it could exist anyway if it was a violation of natural law? Because the thing that gets me, right? It's a well-known fact that if you move up in height, for example, if you move from sea level to a mountain, right? I, I live in Central Europe, we have the Alps, for example. If you move from sea level, right, where, where, where I live, depending on, on where I am, if I'm at work or not, uh, I'm, I'm somewhere at around two to 300 meters above mean sea level, right? So... Right there, the air pressure is, for all practical purposes, uh, 100 hectopascals. Now, if I were to move up in the Alps, this pressure would decrease. And you can actually measure that. It's called the barometric formula. Well, that, that, that's how you model it, of course. Um, and if you look at that, that, that aligns really nicely with all the things you measure. And you can see that the, the more you move up, the, the less pressure you have. Right? And I'm, I live somewhere here, as are most people in the world. I live somewhere here. For all intents and purposes, it's, it's, a, it's a thousand hectopascals. I said a hundred earlier, I'm sorry. I of course meant a thousand. It's a hundred kilopascals, which is thousand hectopascals, because for whatever reason, people use hectopascals, even though hecto is a really silly uh, standard unit prefix. Why, why are we using that? I don't know. It should be kilopascals. 100 kilopascals, right? So... We, we might as well say we have a, a hundred kilopascals every time. But if you move up to like, I don't know, 3000 meters, you could get a very noticeable drop to like somewhere around 700 oh, or 70 kilopascals. You can measure that. And there is no container in between those two. And it still works. So what's wh why is vacuum bothering you? Vacuum is like just an extremely low pressure. That's what vacuum is. And s somehow it bothers you that there is a, an area that has more pressure and an area that has a bit less pressure right next to each other. Well, yeah, obviously, where are they supposed to be? Why would you need a container for that? You would need a container for every single layer of pressure that you have. And because this goes up for practical purposes continuously, you would need infinitely many containers that that it's such a ridiculous thing to 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 ask about right and i love it <laughs> also it, it it shows a big knowledge gap about all of the of the uh atmospheric physics things really uh scale height for example is my favorite explanation to to show you the scale height is the height by which the pressure in the atmosphere has decreased by a factor of e which is just, let's say, 2.7. And the scale height, which is on Earth at about uh, 7 or 8 kilometers, some, some, something something of the rather. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so, somewhere in that area. Of course, it depends on temperature, because temperature and pressure have something to do with each other, right? But in principle, that works. Um, so it's somewhere between seven, it, 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 it's, it's, let's say it's eight kilometers for argumentation purposes, right? And you can calculate the scale height, and I do encourage you to find measurements yourself. Next time uh, you, you, you go on a trip where you move up to the mountains, if, if you do that. I don't know if you have mountains in South Africa. I'm not that good with uh, South African uh, geography. But... If you ever go somewhere where there are mountains and you and you go up that mountain, you don't even need to go up a mountain. You can just change your height by 500 meters. That's that's that can be done within an hour if 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 you find a a good place to do so. Um, 
the Alps, for example, you can go up more than 500 meters within an hour by, by, by train or by car. And, and, and if your phone has a barometer or you can bring one, they are not expensive. Some watches have barometers, right? You can test this for yourself. <laughs> Please do that. You don't require a container for that either. So why do you suddenly want one for, for the, 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 the vacuum thing? It's just a continuation of, of a decrease in pressure with height. That's all that the vacuum is. It's extremely low pressure. There is still, even in the most empty areas in, in outer space, like between galaxies, there is still one particle every cubic centimeters on average, right? And, then, and, and I, I'm not talking about virtual particles. I'm talking about like uh, uh, atoms, right? So also the, the scale height that you could measure can be derived exclusively from physical properties of gases. As I show you here, and, and, and look what's inside here, it's gravity, right? K KBT is, the, is, 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 is the, called the Boltzmann factor. That's the, the uh, named after Austrian physicist, physicist Ludwig Boltzmann. Um, it's so, some kind of an, an analogy to the the energy that's inside a gas at a given temperature. That's how, would I, how I would explain the, the uh, Boltzmann factor, uh, the, the, the Boltzmann, yes, factor, because the Boltzmann constant is in joule per Kelvin. So if you multiply it with Kelvin, you get joule. So kind of how much energy is in a gas at a given temperature. And the other energy here is the potential energy of a, of a uh, well, of, of, of something at a given height, right? And, and, and from that, you can determine that. And I think it's so funny. It is so, so funny that, that f the flat earthers fundamentally seem to not grasp this concept. I love it. When, when a flat earther asks you, you or, or tells you that, a, that you need a container, you don't. You can kind of say gravity is a container, although I don't like the phrasing of that. Craig does that, and I, and I kind of don't like the phrasing. You do not need a container for that. Now, they love to show experiments where you have a glass flask that that uh, uh, there is almost no air in it, so it's a, uh, it, it has a negative relative pressure compared to your surroundings. And then they open it and the gas immediately fills the container and stuff like that. But the same thing, Absolutely the same thing would happen if you uh, take a glass, a glass bottle and you, you open it at the top of a mountain, let's say at 2000 meters height, and then you bring it down to, to sea level and you would open it, air would also rush in and fill it. So according to your logic, you would need a container between those two, but we don't. And I absolutely love this point. Uh, can you? Show me how this is demonstrated to violate natural law and also how we can see it in nature, even though apparently it violates natural law. And also how our understanding of thermodynamics that you in some way use every day hasn't caught up to that yet. I, I, I would sincerely love to know. Also, there are other systems where you have um, other like di di different pressure levels on, on next to each other. Where every time you breathe in, you have different pressure levels. That the, the pressure inside your lungs is lower than the one on the outside. That that's how you breathe in. When you breathe out, it's the other way around. The pressure within your lungs is higher than the one than than the pressure outside. You don't need a container for that. I am I am. It it it, it eludes me. It completely eludes me. How you cannot notice these few simple things and it's it's kind of the 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 best representation of flat earth i have is this question and the complete misunderstanding of all of the physics that would answer it for normal people i love it i think that's quite a straightforward question it is it is a quite simple because question. everything we see with gas pressure requires some sort of containment oh Oh, Heck, even to measure oh, the gas pressure, you require a surface wall. Yeah, the gas pressure, you require a surface wall. How so? 
Yet, they claim we do not need a container, which is the antecedent, for gas pressure. What? We, we clearly don't. Go up to a mountain, the pressure there is lower, no container in between. What is PSI? <coughs> Pounds per square inch. Hmm. So pound in, the, in the civilized world, we use pascals, which is, uh, uh, you know, newtons per square meter. Pounds per square inch of what? Sure, fine. Pressure. Yeah, yes, pressure. Pressure, pressure on the container wall. <laughs> you can define pressure like that, but that doesn't change. Like I, 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 and here they're doing the, this word play again that I love so much. They, they, pressure is defined as force per area, right? In the civilized world, we use Newton per square meter. So one Newton of force pressing against one square meter of, of, of area, that's one Pascal, which is extremely little pressure, right? Um, so if you have, and, and and from that from that they determined that that's that's why we need a a, a container because clearly it needs to press against something. So com complete misunderstanding of gases, like in general. Um, but you could also define pressure over thermodynamic quantities if you go for your yeah, and and I, I, I'm going with ideal gas now because you know who who cares. It's it's a mathematical model. It's not a real gas, but it's it's it works well enough for most of everyday uses. You could bring this volume over, and then you have a equivalent definition of pressure that you move over there, and that, that, then it's just something. It's just something else. Although they use R here, which which is the chemist's kind of explanation of the whole thing. I I like to use. N and KB because it's the physicist because it's literally named after a physicist. So that's that's how I would use it. I would I would use a big N and KB here instead of small N and R. But that's personal preference. Um, you, you you could bring that over and you would have a perfectly fine definition of pressure and you would not need any sort of container for that because and that's the that's the big thing. Our understanding of gases is so far beyond you that you think you can say well it's it's in your case pounds per square inch and you need a container for that that is such amazingly simple reasoning and i'm and i'm, I'm truly and honorably fascinated by it could you could you show me a, a physics textbook where it says pressure needs a container i would i would, I would love to 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 see that and not, mind you, not one that says that, well, vacuum chambers need a strong outer wall, because, well, of course they do. They're in a high-pressure environment. Clearly they do. But as a, as a, as a whole, they don't need a container. If, if anything, they need a force something, right? The container walls exert a force on the gas molecules, but you don't need a container wall to exceed force on stuff. You, you, you could have magnets if you talk about plasma, for example. You can have magnets, you can have electromagnets, really. you can have electric fields, you get all of the classical forces, including gravity, are absolutely fine to, to uh, if you will, create the pressure, although I think create pressure is a bit of a silly wording, but you can do it. You can even have extremely small amounts. I'm going off on a tangent here. You can even have extremely small amounts of, of pressure without any kind of force, just by a particle on random chance hitting a surface. You can have that without any container. Just if you imagine a single particle, and if it crashes into a contain, uh, like into a wall, it will have exerted something that technically can be called a pressure. But that's on a tangent. Really has nothing to do with the whole subject. But I, I thought I'd mention it. Exactly, that's the thing. So yeah, um, when we do get some people to try and demonstrate to us gas pressure out containment, this is what we get. <laughs> oh yeah, please show us the example. I love it. Show us. Let's go have some fun. Gaia, yeah, pressure without a container is also oh, nice. There we go. Pressure of a gas in a closed containers, showing containers, containers. You want? Because if you want to show things with different pressures, in your home or in a laboratory well yeah of course <laughs> big, big surprise if if you're in an environment that is 
pressurized with a different pressure, well, big surprise, you do need a container. Who would have thought? How can the atmosphere be next to space without a container? Yes, it's called gravity. So you guys are going to quickly watch that. Stick this quickly. So, so we're now watching a video of guys watching a video. So you are watching a video of me watching a video of a guy watching a video. I hope they don't watch a video. You're watching it. We are watching it. Not suck. No shit, Sherlock. Most flat earthers don't know Vacuum does not suck. No shit, Sherlock. Most flat earthers don't know music. Container, air molecules, vacuum. These points only move in random directions and bounce off one another, okay? That's yeah. the usual approximation of ideal gas, although I would like to to uh, tell you here that for an ideal gas, these gas molecules are very, very big. If I you... get that problem. Well, my, my vacuum cleaner is terrible. It doesn't suck either. <laughs> <laughs> vacuum and the vacuum cleaner are so far apart. So, if you open the container... Vacuums, like vacuum cleaners, just create a slightly lower pressure. By the way, without a container, did you know that? That, that there's an opening and they create a lower pressure without a container. Funny how they do that, right? Yeah, the dots will push each other out of it. Yes. Exactly. Guess their own... No, hang on. You haven't watched it completely. Yeah, so... In the so how can... Ah. Well, oh, technically, okay. this, the, the, the way he depicts it here is that there's a sharp line, which obviously there isn't. Our definition of space is arbitrary. Some people say it's from 80 kilometers, some say it's 100, some say it's, well, 500. It's an arbitrary definition, really. Vacuum A, okay. So I'm gonna see. No, gravity. Uh... But, but it is gravity. And you can, and you can make exceptionally well measurable predictions just with gravity and how we think gases work and how much pressure you can expect at a given height so if you say that that's wrong do you have a better explanation of it because you i, I i'm promising you that you don't you see this is where the, the problem comes gravity cannot do that, anything to guess of course you can it's not a force of course it is and you have yet demonstrated force. That gravity can hold gas down indefinitely. Have they been able? To so f first of all, why the indefinitely? That seems kind of random to me. But since gases have mass, and we know that they do, because you know we we move around, you feel you f you can feel the air flowing around you. That would not be possible if it wouldn't have mass. Um, so f that that's just one example. Of course, you can know from other effects that air clearly has mass. Um, so air is mass, and gravity, as we know, is the force. He flat earthers love saying that it's not a force. You, I'm actually fine with that. You can say it's not a force. First of all, it manifests as a force, as I've shown in one of my videos, which, by the way, he has seen before making this live stream, because he commented on it. Um, it, it, it manifests as a force. Secondly, I'm fine with that. Uh, I, I might as well say the gas molecules fall into the curvature of space-time, strictly geometry, that is caused by Earth having mass and is lying in some sort of space-time. That's also fine by me. I don't need to invoke mass, right? We we calculate a uh, force. I'm sorry, force, force. We calculate things with forces in quote unquote simpler physics and in engineering and stuff like that, because it's easy and it makes the exactly same prediction in the environment that we are in so well to do this you know also we don't need to somehow demonstrate that that uh, forces can hold down gases because you can just look at it because we live on it mm. again mo move move up to a mountain and you will see that there's a lower pressure there no they <laughs> haven't definitely we, we, we have, you just don't accept it for an arbitrary reason, either because you don't understand it, in which case I feel sorry for you, or you b do well understand it. And honestly, I don't think that you are a, s a stupid person. So I, I, I don't want to call someone disingenuous or a liar, but, but I do think that for a lot of flat earthers, that is what is really going on. Uh, Professor Fulbal, uh, make sure when you have fun with that gas pressure question, make sure to be talking yes. about gas behavior for us <clears throat> with containment <clears throat> i mean just just look at the for example the wikipedia picture of ideal gas that gives you no. 
a I, great introduction to gas behavior. I, I he, yeah. It's called the kinetic theory of gas, by the way. Where's the know. demonstration for this? I mean, this is this you just uh, outside of well, everywhere actually. The guy claiming gravity is doing something. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the thing. You have a gradient. Google Bell is legit. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so is Google. <laughs> you see, this all is... he has to do, all he has to do, is show his credentials on video. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But you see, this is the same nonsense we get all the time. Hey, Moomin Rider, good to see you. <clears throat> um, pointing up to the sky and saying we see pressure gradient, so therefore no. It's, it's not the sky. It's the thing that you live in. That's not the sky. That's just you having you a belief. And no, 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 definitely no, no. Show... It's it's not a belief. Go up to a mountain and measure it. That's not difficult. If my phone had a barometer, I don't own a barometer, funnily enough, although I have ordered one, um, from, from, from where my parents live to where I live and I work, there's a difference in, in sea height of about, like, of about 400 meters. So that, that's clearly measurable. Showing you'd have no idea what demonstration means. <laughs> So, so do you say that when you fly in an airplane, the pressure around the airplane is just the same? To demonstrate because or clearly to point it's not. at something is clearly two different things. And you absolutely know that. You absolutely know that. The pressure gradient happens because of gas behavior. When the volume yes. increases and there's less things to hit off of, not the necessarily pressure decreases. That. But, but that, that's part of the gas. reason. Yes. If you look at the ideal gas, yeah, you have a couple of ways that you can decrease or increase or kind of change the pressure. If you bring the volume over, you can either have an increase or a decrease in temperature. You can have an increase and a decrease in the number of particles you have. You can have an increase and a decrease in the volume. The gas constant won't change and neither will Boltzmann's constant. But but you, you can have a change in all three of these things, right? So pressure can be manipulated in quite a various amount of ways behavior so yeah this guy's definitely not showing uh any reason why he's just claiming gravity yeah no but his explanation makes sense why why, why don't you why don't you uh, <clears throat> i mean you just say you want an expert and a demonstration i mean you okay. can you can very well do Read, it yeah guys this right? thumbnail alone debunks your argument gas pressure gas pressure is the force of the gas particles colliding with the walls that's that's a definition yes oh, that's an okay it? definition <clears throat> two balls so we yeah, have i'm, go I'm going, going on for over length here because i want to see what he's what he's talking about back. let's do this uh where are you all the volume Come for on. that video ah okay yeah i think go because i'm Listen to this. Oh, yeah. Because he cannot back up his assertion. Too small way. He could be determined to be right. Because without something for the particles to be striking, you're not going to get that change of momentum. But that I mean, doesn't strike mean off of each that there has to be a dome. And you can also have a change of momentum if, for example, you have a force applied on it. But All know. that means is I just take the balloon away. Without the balloon, these air particles aren't going to be striking anything. Therefore, there is no pressure. Without the balloon, in, in, in principle, that, that, there's an absurdly little amount of pressure still left. We can say that that's no pressure. I'm going to be striking anything. Therefore, yes, that's how that works. But do you see how there's a difference when you have a balloon, in, a tiny balloon, mind you, in a locally pressurized environment and when you have many kilometers of... of, of Scale? I I I don't Four, think he does. There is no pressure. <laughs> That's quite why, straightforward. Why don't you? Isn't it? Why don't you look at the rest <laughs> of that video, there, my mate? Jason Brown being a man for three months. Thank you very much. Honestly, model. probably because Thank you, you wouldn't quite get it. Okay, you got to say about that. That's yeah. a whole different thing. Ah, here we go. We'll show you a container yeah. screen, by the way. Okay. Exactly. Hello, we're there at a container. I'm sure that's a container he's showing the screen, long. correct? The first nine that's seconds, a barometer. he's debunked his own claim. He's just showed he has no <laughs> idea what a that's container is. That's a barometer. You see, a barometer um, has some kind of reference in it, right? It, and, and, and that reference is, is, is uh, gauged. So, yes, the barometer itself needs to be enclosed because it needs to, to 
hold on to the exact amount of, of, of air particles it has, right? Because it's it's a measurement instrument. Means. But it's not the instrument we're talking about. You are, you're distracting from Sweet. the actual topic. Is. Why don't you? Why don't you? Uh, you know we keep hearing this over and over and right over now. again. You can't have gas pressure racer Anthony Ryan. No, according to this, you can't. They're out there. This is taking longer than I have anticipated. Well, you know, I guess pretty much every other flat oh, earth. God, they're going on. I will need to, you know to, what? to record a second part to that. I, I, I am so sorry. I'm at 25 minutes. That's too long. And I do need to move on to do other stuff today. So with that, I thank you very much for watching. I will continue this in part two. Um, if you enjoyed the video, do consider leaving a like. If you enjoyed it a great deal, I would really uh, appreciate it if you think about maybe considering subscribing, possibly. Uh, other than that, I wish you a very nice day, and I will see you in the next part. Bye!